Uh, hello and welcome to Kailash Eco Village. My name is Oli Erson uh, and I'm the founder of uh, this two acre intentional community located near uh, the center of Portland, Oregon uh, in the Pacific Northwest. Let me tell you a little bit about Kailash Eco Village. Uh, as I mentioned, we're an intentional community. We have currently about 55 residents living in 34 living units. Uh, 30 one-bedroom apartments, two two-bedrooms, one three-bedroom and one four-bedroom. And we're located on about four acres of gardens. Um, we started this project about 12 years ago, so you can see uh, we've been uh, creating a lot of uh, gardens uh, ever since that time, and we have some mature gardens available to, to see now. Uh, one of the principal practices that we uh, engage in here at Kailash Eco Village is to garden veganically. Now, what does veganic gardening uh, mean? Uh, veganic is a type of organic gardening, meaning uh, not using synthetic pesticides and fertilizers as part of your agricultural practices, but to use more natural practices such as enhancing soil fertility through composting, soil building, uh, recycling nutrients in the form of compost, uh, green manures and, and other types of fertility enhancement, soil creation, uh, and natural weed and pest control. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, one of the fundamental practices in veganic gardening is building your tilth and your, the fertility of your soil. Soil, of course, is the foundation for any type of garden. Uh, and the, the two primary components that define how well your soil will provide nutrients and a habitat for the plants to grow are these two concepts. One is tilth or the physical structure of the soil. In other words, is it hard, is it dense, is it soft, is it fluffy, is it easy for the roots to penetrate, does it have a lot of organic matter in it? Uh, and the second concept is fertility. Does the soil have the nutrients that plants need? So those are two of the focuses of any kind of gardening or agriculture. And when we use veganic practices, we try and mimic the practices of nature that are sustainable and non-toxic. Uh, as you've probably heard, with conventional agricultural practices, the soil is often depleted year after year. Uh, and there's topsoil loss, the topsoil washes off, there's erosion. Um, in veganic and organic gardening practices, we actually build more soil every year and the quality of the soil actually improves both in its tilth or physical structure as well as the nutrient uh, components in it. And how do we do that with veganic practices? Uh, with conventional uh, organic practices, uh, Nutrients are often brought in in the form of manures or slaughterhouse byproducts such as bone meal or blood meal. With veganian practices, we totally avoid those because they depend on animal exploitation. Instead, we use practices such as green manures, uh, veganic uh, supplements, uh, and composting and recycling of nutrients. Uh, so, for example, Take a look at this pile of vegetable matter right here. If you look at this vegetable bed right here in front of me, about four days ago, this was full of vegetation about this high. These are kale plants, and the kale had reached the end of its season and it was ready to move to the next crop. So all of the plants that were about two to three feet high in this area were pulled up and put in piles like this. This is what the, the material looks like. Just coarse, dead plants, still green, but still full of so many nutrients. Now, how do you use these? These can be called green manures. Now, in this case, this was actually a crop before. Green manures often refer to plants that are only used to enhance fertility, 
but they can also actually provide uh, productive harvest such as the kale or in this case these are fava beans. You see each one of these is a fava flower that can create beans. But to create uh, fertility using these so-called green manures, we take this material, we chop it into small pieces, and then we put it in between the plants that we're growing. So if you look behind me here, this is a bed that we did uh, about a week earlier than this bed. I'm actually going to stand up and move back here so you can see this. So here you can see our rows of planting beds and then in between we placed our green manures, the chopped material that used to be growing in here, and we placed it on the rows where we actually walk. Now, how do the, these nutrients get into the planting beds, you may wonder. One of the theories is at nighttime, the earthworms come up into this material, they start consuming it, uh, and then when they return to the soil at nighttime, they deposit those nutrients as their worm castings in the soil beds. The uh, scientific literature shows definitely that this type of practice enhances the growth of the beds even though the pathways make up only a small part of the area. Now if you look to my left here you'll see one of our planting circles that is full of green manures. Okay, So these are plantings that will be demolished and the soil cleared but all of this vegetation will be chopped and used as green manures. There are a couple of ways of doing that. One is to simply compost that material in a compost bin. The second is to use this practice here where the green manures are placed as a mulch in the pathways. You'll get a just some a few glimpses of what we're doing here in our gardens today. We actually offer monthly tours open to the public on the first Saturday of the month during the summertime growing season. So if you're interested in seeing, interested in seeing more details and see many of the other projects that we won't be discussing today, please join us at one of our monthly tours. As I mentioned, composting is one of the fundamental techniques for building soil tilth as well as fertility. And here is an example of a composting process. As I mentioned, Kailash Eco Village has about 55 residents. Everybody here is required to compost all of their kitchen scraps as well as their garden refuse if they, uh, the residents are gardening. And uh, for that reason, you can see this is a fairly substantial compost processing operation. We have 11 bins. Each bin is about two cubic yards. What I'm going to do right now is show you uh, how residents compost their kitchen scraps. Now here is uh, one of Portland's uh, standard kitchen compost collection containers that you have in your kitchen. And you can see this is full of banana peels and orange peels and things like that. Uh, this material is ready to compost. Uh, so what I'm going to do is dump that into this bucket. And then I'm going to spray this out at the hose there. But uh, before I do that, you can see what's in here. We have raw compost. We don't want to leave it like this. We want to cover it with a cover so that people who come to the composting area don't see any objectionable materials. Also, it avoids pests coming in, uh, rodents or birds coming in and digging in the compost. So how we do that is we add a cover material on top. This is sifted wood chips. And you can see what I'm going to do is just put a thin layer on top, a few handfuls of this wood chip material. And then that's what it looks like when you're done. And it's ready for the next resident to come uh, and add more compost. And this material sits over here on the side for any resident to use. Uh, right behind me here, you'll see where we're gathering garden refuse. So this is weeds and material that have uh, plants that have reached the end of their lives and we're ready to recycle them. So 
uh, with organic and vegardening techniques, there's no such thing as waste. Waste is considered a verb and it's an action that we strive to avoid if at all possible. So this is not waste material, this is actually a resource that we are going to use to create compost. And so how we do it is every week to two weeks, we, we the residents here, uh, as part of our, our composting team, get together and we have a work party where we mix the kitchen compost scraps with the garden refuse in layers like a lasagna. So we'll put a layer of this first and then we'll put several buckets. Typically at a work party we'll have 20 to 30 buckets of uh, kitchen scraps here. And we do layer after layer in the bins until all of the material is used up. And then the final process is to cover the top of the bin with that same material, the wood chips like this so that you can see into any bins you don't have any garbage or objectionable materials visible. Uh, then this material sits for about six to nine months. It composts uh, and at the end of that time this material is emptied into the gardens and helps us to enhance our soil fertility. So here's a bin of compost that's ready to apply to the gardens and I'm just going to pick this up and look how soft and fluffy this is. No longer can you see banana peels, orange pieces, or any vegetation. It's all broken down into a compost material. And what's totally amazing is to smell this. It smells like rich, rich earth. There's no objectionable odors and plants just go crazy with this. You can grow plants in 100% compost. They just go crazy from all the nutrients and the soft, fluffy tilth of this material. All right, so uh, one of the principles of organic and veganic gardening is to recycle nutrients that are uh, continuously produced in a sustainable fashion. And you may be wondering what this bottle is of this gold-colored liquid here. We call this a golden opportunity. This is urine that I've saved. Instead of peeing into a toilet, I pee into a bottle and save this nutrient-rich fluid. And I'm going to show you how I use it directly on plants. This is a great source of uh, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. A uh, little bit of background. Uh, about 90% of what we excrete from our bodies comes out in the form of urine. It's generally, if not sterile, it's pathogen free, uh, requires essentially no processing before the nutrients can be applied to the plants. And actually about 90% of the nutrients we excrete come out in the form of urine. So I'm going to show you how simple it is to apply this nutrient rich fluid to plant. So here I have a bed of cabbage plants, broccoli and cauliflower, and I'm just going to pour a little bit, probably about a cup, on each, at the base of each plant. And that soaks into the ground, soaks into the soil because our soil is very soft and fluffy. There. Now the bottle is empty. Uh, it's important to keep the urine off of the foliage, not because it can be detrimental to the foliage, but urine itself, if it lingers uh, after you've left, that can create odors. And so to, pr to prevent that, the easiest way to do that is to take a watering wand and just apply a stream of water to the plants like that. So what this does is it accomplishes two uh, needs. One, it uh, rinses the foliage on the plant, and second, it uh, dilutes the urine and washes it into the ground. So there's no urine on the surface anymore that can create an odor 
after the process is finished and the nutrients are sent into the soil where the plant can use them. It's a very, very simple process. All you have to do is figure out how to pee in a bottle and then uh, on a weekly basis or through the growing season, apply the urine to your plants and you'll see a tremendous boost in fertility. Plants that were once uh, yellowing, small and sickly looking uh, gain a tremendous amount of vigor. They get very deep green color uh, and they become very lush and verdant. I want to mention one thing that's unique about Kailash Eco Village. Since we have a lot of gardeners here, probably about half or two-thirds of our residents engage in gardening, which are primarily focused on food production. We have two general types of gardening. One is the garden areas where we grow together in a communal fashion, such as these beds right here in front of me. Uh, these are owned by the community as a whole. Behind me, we have a smaller plot. This is one of our individual garden plots. Uh, in this case, somebody has just planted kale a few days ago, and this will be a kale plot here. So this is about a 10 foot by 10 foot or 100 square foot of gardening space that an individual determines what to grow in their own plot. These are really particularly photogenic right here too. So I'm standing right here by our starts area. So you can see we grow a lot of our own seedlings here. These are kale and different kinds of uh, brassica family, and these are onions here. Uh, behind me is a greenhouse. So this area here is used to start the seeds for our communally gardened areas. And of course, sometimes we have a surplus, and so individuals get some of these starts too to plant in their own individual garden plots. Okay, so you may wonder what I'm doing in front of this uh, arch with laundry hanging underneath of it. This is called our squash tunnel. And what these are is, you'll see individual panels. They're about this wide, four feet wide or so, and about 20 feet long. And we've attached the ends to the ground at each side, creating an arch. What we do is we plant squashes all along the bottom and the top. And in the summertime, the squashes grow up and completely cover this arch. Uh, their squashes, when they fruit, hang down kind of like Christmas ornaments on a tree in the center of the arch. You can also use this technique for other type of crops that need a trellis, such as pole beans, cucumbers, and things like that. Uh, in the wintertime, when you're not growing crops, this works as a great clothesline. Actually, this is now springtime, and we haven't planted our squash yet. In Oregon, we plant our squash in June. So, but by September, this will be completely covered with foliage and full of uh, maturing squash hanging in underneath the arches. It's a beautiful sight to see.